everyone! I'm so glad you're here at the King and Kids Puppet Show. We've been talking a lot about living with confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. When you remember how much God loves you, that will help you live with confidence, no matter what happens around you. This week, we're learning about Elijah and the prophets of Baal, and that God can do the impossible. Let's dive right in! The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Kings, Chapter 18. Israel was ruled by many kings who didn't listen to God, but King Ahab was the very worst. He even built a temple to a false god. Everybody worship Baal. He is very great because, I don't know, he can make it rain and stuff. What? But the Lord sent a prophet named Elijah to deliver a message to King Ahab. As the Lord lives, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years, except at my word. You pipsqueak! Baal can make it rain. Also, off with your head! Elijah quickly departed the palace, and at the Lord's direction, he escaped and hid east of the Jordan River. For three years, there was no rain in Israel. Impossible! I won't allow it! Fail. Make it rain this instant! Crops failed, rivers and brooks dried up. King Ahab was desperate. In fact, his wife Jezebel even hunted down most of the prophets of God that were left in Israel. Off with their heads! But through it all, God provided food and water for Elijah. In the third year of the drought, God spoke to Elijah again. Go, speak to Ahab. Then I will send rain on the land. You do realize he wants to kill me. Okay, here goes. As Elijah traveled to the palace, he met King Ahab on the road. Is that you, you troubler of Israel? I haven't made trouble for Israel. You have. Yeah, well, I'm rubbing your glue. Whatever you say bounces off me and sticks to you. You've abandoned the Lord and followed Baal. <laughs> what else? He's more popular. You want a showdown? Fine. Gather all the people and meet me on Mount Carmel. Oh, oh and bring all the prophets of Baal. Oh, you're on. King Ahab sent a message throughout the land, and the Israelites gathered on Mount Carmel, along with 450 of the prophets of Baal. Uh, how long will you go back and forth between two opinions? <laughs> if the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal's God, follow him. I'm the only prophet of the Lord left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Hey, get two bulls for us. Let Baal's prophets prepare one of the bulls and place it on an altar to Baal, but not light it. I'll put the other bull on an altar to the Lord. The God who answers by fire, well, he is God. What you say is good. The prophets of Baal prepared a bull as a sacrifice and placed it on the altar to Baal. A Baal, this is for you. Light this bull on fire. Hey, Baal, answer us. From morning until noon, the prophets of Baal danced around the altar, calling on their false god. <clears throat> hey, shout louder. Uh, maybe he's asleep or, or on a trip. <laughs> the prophets of Baal danced harder and shouted louder all through the afternoon, but there was still no answer. At last, Elijah stood up. Enough. Come here to me. Elijah took 12 large stones and rebuilt an altar to the Lord. Then he took the bull and sticks of wood and placed them on the stones and dug a deep trench around the entire altar. He turned to several of the Israelites and said, Fill four large jars with water and pour it on the offering and the wood. You 
do know wet wood doesn't burn, right? Just do it. Now do it again. Do it a third time. The wood became so wet, water even flowed down the altar and filled the trench. Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, let everyone know that you are the one true God. Answer me, Lord, so these people will know that you are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. There was a long moment of silence. Everyone waited, breathless. And then fire fell from heaven onto the altar and instantly burned up the wet wood and the sacrifice, even looking up the water in the trench. The people fell on their faces. Terrified, the prophets of Baal tried to escape, but were captured and wiped out. Elijah turned to King Ahab. Go, eat and drink, for there is the sound of a heavy rain. Though the sky was completely clear, in a short time a tiny cloud appeared. More clouds joined the first. They turned dark and black. The wind rose fat drops of rain splattered onto the dry earth for the first time in three years. Filled with God's strength and joy, Elijah raced ahead of King Ahab's chariot to the city. God had done the impossible. God is in control of all things. Nothing is impossible for him. Sometimes we don't always see it, but it's true. God was definitely in control of that showdown on the mountain between Elijah and King Ahab. When God brought the fire, everyone could see that he is the true God, the one who's in charge of everything. There might be some situations in your life that seem impossible, but you can always trust God and believe that he is with you. He is always in control and working in our lives in ways that we may not expect. We can put all our confidence in Him. Let's pray and ask God to help us do this. Dear God, thank you for being the God who can do the impossible. Help us remember that we can trust you no matter what. Give us the confidence to take on the challenges we have to face in life, because we know you're with us. We love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you all next week. Bye, everyone. <laughs>